So I'm currently the product manager of bus technology at the MBTA's customer technology department. So our mission is to give MBTA bus operations, so bus operations being the people who run bus service, um, to give them the tools that they need to deliver reliable service. And then um, kind of a uh, sister to that is to provide everyone in the Metro Boston region with trustworthy real-time information. So for example, the real-time bus predictions that uh, appear on our phones and tell us that the bus is gonna be here in three minutes. And so um, our key to achieving this is to ensure that bus operations uses tools that share that real-time information. Uh, you know, you also have crowding information. So like in the pandemic, we uh, really push to um, provide riders with real-time information as far as like how crowded the bus is. So um, riders can feel empowered to make a decision about whether to get on a bus or not. Um, and so, yeah, that's another type of real information that uh, we provide. I think this is my favorite question to answer. Um, I've gotten it a lot, but honestly, I was tired of being at the mercy of private clients. Um, I was really drawn to the idea of serving the public instead, um, specifically aimed to improve uh, transit for historically underinvested communities, since both the benefits and burdens of public transit, transit, and not only public transit, but just government in general, uh, largely affect these communities. So. My old job, I truly loved, I, I loved my old job, I loved my old team, but I did not, towards the end, find joy in working on a deck uh, for a client or being asked to change something in the deck super last minute. Um, whereas I don't feel that same way when it's um, for the public or for writers. You know, if writers report an issue, they complain about something, or if someone writes to tell us that they were late to their job because our bus predictions were wrong, that motivates me to work with our prediction vendor to do a better job. So I'm really happy and I was really drawn to the idea of honestly just helping the public. Back in 2019, I was still living in Paris and I was really in inspired by the Paris transit system. As far as I'm concerned, it's incredible. You can find a metro uh, or bus stop everywhere. You absolutely don't need a car because of that. and. While people may dislike the metro in Paris because it's super crowded, it, I was really impressed by how their transit data was so reliable and accurate when it just made my life so much easier and it made navigating the system so much easier. So I never really had to rely on Uber or on anything else really. And so when I was in Paris, I was a consultant and a lot of our clients were thinking about how to leverage technology to improve the transit space. So we had clients like SNCF, which is the National Railroad, and RATP, which is like the MTA or the MBTA equivalent in Paris. And I was really moved by, I guess, their ambition to uh, find solutions for these complex issues. And at the time, I really wanted to find an organization who was thinking about how to incorporate technology in the transit space in a smart way. And uh, by smart, I really mean uh, a way that modernizes the agency, that helps both like operations and riders, that reduces vendor lock-ins. So like you don't have to work with one uh, vendor for just you know a lot of things and that reduces costs. And luckily I found that at the MBTA. So uh, yeah, I was really excited by that. I think the origin of this department is also why I was drawn to it because if you were in Boston in 2015, uh, you know that that was one of the worst winters ever. And uh, if you were here, you probably remember that the MBTA did not handle that winter particularly well. Um, and it was kind of, you know, it, it shocked. It shocked people within the agency. So uh, I guess the founder of this um, organ of this uh, department, his name is called David Block Schachter. Now he's with Transit App, which we still partner with, and he came to the MBTA and he was just like, hey, if you give me X amount of money, I can help modernize the agency. And so we, you know, he, not we, <laughs> he built with other people um, this department from the bottom up. Uh, he hired people from the tech space, a lot of the tech uh, startups um, in Boston and brought them over to work for the MBTA. And so since 2015, we've been working um, sort of this way. 
Honestly, it's not so much about working in tech and it's more about working with technical people. So it's, it really boils down to the people. Um, I really love leaning on people with different sorts of technical expertise, whether that's hardware, whether that's software engineering, whether that's uh, you know research and design in this space. And I kind of, I, I love problem solving with them and I love being inspired by them and I love learning from them. Uh, and you, you know, uh, yeah, I think that's something that's really unique. I'm a technologist just by, so I was gonna say, I, I think anyone can be a technologist. I think I consider myself a technologist because I'm tech driven or because I can comfortably work in like a tech driven space, um, but I'm not a software engineer, um, but I still consider myself a technologist because I work with technology, I lead technology, I um, manage uh, a tech product, so yeah. So it's a project that I currently work on. It's a product. I currently lead a product called Skate, and it's what we call a bus dispatch tool, and we built that in-house. So our researcher, designer, um, software development team put their heads together, and uh, we built what we call Skate. And so to give you a little bit of context, we understand what it does. The MBTA, um, during peak hours, we have about 800 buses on the road. And as you can imagine, someone's got to manage those buses, need to know where they are and when they're late, how it's going to affect service. Um, and so we have dispatchers and what we call the operation control center that do that. But we also have inspectors out in the field. So inspectors are driving mobile cars around the streets or they're assigned to different stations. So before skate, they used to rely on scheduled papers, like uh, paper schedules to keep track of the buses coming through their station. But now with Skate um, in the mix, uh, they use that. It's a web application, so it's really easy to use on their phone, on a tablet, which we provide for them, and or on a computer if that's what um, is available to them at their station. So Skate tells uh, an inspector where the bus is, if it's on time, if it's not on time, how late or early it is, who's driving the bus, and how they fit into the schedule of the day, because a bus has basically a piece of work for the entire day. And it helps to know, you know, where that bus is um, and how it fits. So uh, yeah, it's really, it's really exciting to me to build something tangible for people internally um, that will help them, will give them the real time information that they need to do their job um, easier and better. Well, the thing is that I came in work to work in government because I wanted to help people because I felt very passionately about transportation issues, about um, building a more equitable transit system. And so I consider myself still to be a pretty vocal person. Uh, and I enjoy like being on Twitter and being vocal about like my opinions and stuff. And so I wish I knew and I still don't know how to navigate this super well all the time, but I wish I knew how to separate the part of me that works for a government agency and that, you know, understands all of the constraints that we work with and some blockers and what we're trying to do with the side of me that is a writer also and wants the agency to be better. Like, it's hard to reconcile those sides. So, uh, you know, can you be both? Are you a writer? When, you know, it's kind of hard to navigate that and to respect and represent your agency on many different platforms while kind of still staying true to like what you want to see improve within the agency, which you may very well know is coming or you think it's coming, but you don't know exactly when because agencies are huge. And so you don't have like an eye and ear in every single kind of pocket of it. And I also wish someone told me it requires patience. You know, you mentioned some of the people at the federal level, uh, working a lot slowly. And I think that that's true too at like our level, which is just, you know, we're a state agency and cause you know, we serve parts of Rhode Island and not just Boston, but greater Boston, but things take time. Um, you know, you can st finally start a project that you've been waiting for that you believe will have impact, whether that's internally or externally. And then something takes place and it forces you to pivot. So now you have to wait just a little bit longer to tackle that project that you were so excited about. And also that change takes time. Uh, you know, no organization is perfect. And I think in the past year, especially, uh, we've seen just how much work we all need to do um, to, to fight white supremacy um, and how it's embedded in our or organization. Um, 
and I do think that people want change, but I think that people are also human. Uh, so for example, the MBTA, uh, we had a, an agency wide, uh, diversion, diversity, equity, and inclusion committee. Um, but in the past year, uh, leadership decided to kind of start from scratch and rebuild that committee. And uh, I think they received more than 300 applications and they really want to prioritize field officials who have more, you know, I work in an office, field officials have a more to direct, um, more direct communication and impact with writers. So, um, you know, now the, re the review committee is reviewing these 300 applications on top of their regular job um, and that takes time. And so, it's also going to take time to see people affect change within the organization. And sometimes as a person, you kind of want things to happen now and that's just not the way it works. And obviously I feel like there's bureaucracy and all of that, but I wish someone told me kind of just like, you just need to have patience and you need to like lead with humanity and it's gonna take time and you might not see everything you want to see change happen, so yeah. It's, uh, it's the people. Uh, when people think of a transit agency specifically, uh, I think that in their heads, people think of trains and buses, um, but it, you know, behind that, there's schedulers and planners, software developers, researchers, instructors, who train operators how to drive buses and trains and inspectors who help manage service. So working with them has been really impactful because it has helped humanize this agency. Uh, but for example, with Skate, uh, the product that I currently lead, uh, it felt really great to build a tool for actual people and then be able to get direct feedback for th from them telling me like, oh, this is really helpful to me. Or like, actually this feature, you know, you built it, but we don't really need it. What we really need is this. Um, and then, you know, them coming back to us and being like, hey, thank you for listening to me. This really helped me do my job. That, it feels really good to have a direct impact and to, yeah, to just humanize the agency. That is a complicated question. Um, I'm tempted to say yes, of course. Um, just because I don't think anyone agrees with every single decision an administration makes. I think blindly agreeing with an administration will likely impede you from doing a good job for the people that the administration serves. But then, you know, there's a difference between not agreeing with every single thing and agreeing with maybe too much. So it's like, you know, there's varying levels of disagreement and it's like, how often do you disagree? To what extent are people being heard if they, you know, are expressing their concerns over something. And so for me, it really boils down to like, is working for the administration forcing you to go against your principles and values? And I guess if that, if the answer to that question is yes, then I don't think that I would work for an administration that I disagree with that often, you know, that's forcing me to go against what I believe in. I think technologists have the knowledge and the expertise to help government agencies catch up with some of the technical changes that have been spurred by private companies. I think the pace of technical change has been really fast, probably a lot faster than any of us anticipated. And that pace has made it really hard to meet the public's expectations. Um, and I think we owe it to them uh, to figure it out. And I think that technologists, not only them, but they have some of the expertise um, and I guess the will uh, to help us get there. Honestly, it's not glamorous. Uh, I think you also put a lot of pressure on yourself because you are not serving private companies because you're serving people with needs um, and with real life problems. So uh, I personally, I I put a lot of pressure on myself. I think other people do too, because they care, um, which is the flip side of that. And it's sometimes frustrating and it's not always fast paced, but my boss always reminds us, like, it's always interesting. There's always gonna be a problem to solve. There's always going to be plenty to do. And it's really, really meaningful work. And yeah, I just wish people, Kind of, people knew that, you know, I think a lot of the time we think of government work and we think of like stuffy ties and, you know, uh, 
just like these cubicles and boring work and it's all administrative and like that's not the case at all it's not glamorous you know we don't have happy hours and like unlimited kombucha but um we have talent and we have like passion